Okay, so today I want to go over how to remove the rear differential on this is a first gen Subaru Legacy. So this is the 1990 to 94 Legacy. These are a little different from some of the later cars, and I'll go over some of those differences here. Um, one thing that's nice is in these older cars you actually have this sticker back here that tells you the gear ratio. This will also tell you if you have a limited slip in the diff it'll actually say LSD on that sticker. For whatever reason after the uh, after 94 of these first gen legacies they stopped putting that sticker on there and instead just have some six digit code that you have to then decipher to find out what the gear ratio is and whether or not it's an LSD. I um, don't know why they changed that. Uh, this I thought was much nicer. You got the part number, everything on there. Uh, you know, good info, but like typical things of cars, as they get newer, they try to hide more and more information and make it harder to find. Um, Anyways, to get started with removing this diff, and we'll also go over how to remove the uh, axles as well. The first place I like to start is removing this axle nut here. Um, this is a 32 millimeter nut. These can sometimes vary from being fairly easy to remove to total pain in the ass. Um, sometimes even an air gun won't get them off if they've been on there a while. I've had to use a big breaker bar with a pipe on it and almost, you know, feels like you're going to snap something. Um, I've already loosened both of these. It's best to do this with the car on the ground, in park, with the e-brake on, or in gear if it's a manual. Because um, sometimes you have to put so much torque on it that it'll start to roll the whole car forward or backwards. So I've had to put blocks under the wheels and all kinds of stuff when loosening these sometimes. Um, the other thing I like to do is if you do get those off is sometimes these axles can get seized in the hub. The uh, splines will rust up in there so I like to hit some PV blaster or something in there. Let that soak in. These are, I've already done that, and these are loose on both sides. Uh, so that's what I like to start with. Um, I'll go ahead and pull the wheels off next and uh, carry on from there. Okay, so in order to get the axles loosened up away from the differential, there's not enough room to slide the axle out of here or away from the diff with the whole suspension connected. And there's two ways to go about uh, taking the part of the suspension apart. You can either take the two strut bolts out up here, and that'll allow you to pull the whole hub assembly away from the diff and pop the axle out that way. Or you can take this bolt out that runs through both lateral links down here. Um, this bolt can sometimes, especially if you have a car from the East Coast, will get extremely rusted and can be almost impossible to remove without cutting it. Um, so you may want to try taking these strut bolts out first. These look bad. I think they're mostly just covered in dirt and not rust. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this lower bolt on this car because I also have to replace these lateral links. I don't know if you can see it there. That one's bent. Um, the link is are bent on the other side as well. Alright, so that bolt came out pretty easily. Um, that's not always the case, depending on where the your car came from. These commonly get rusted in place. So now 
Now that that's out, it allows you to pull the whole hub out and get some more slack on this axle here. So next I'll go back in near the differential and on the newer differentials, everything 95 and up on the Legacies, and I think all the Imprezas, um, you just give it a hard tug and it'll just pop right out. These are a little different and there's a pin that needs to be driven out. So we'll go under there and uh, drive that pin out of there. Okay, so right here is the spring pin that needs to be driven out. This is the same sort of setup that you have in the front on these cars where this pin holds the axle on a little stub shaft that comes out of the differential. Uh, this is essentially this is the same exact setup that you have on the old 80s cars, Loyals, GLs, uh, Brats, all use this same sort of setup. Different rear suspension, but same axle um, system. But um, this is different from your newer generation of cars where it's a male axle that just pops into the diff. These are what you call female axles, and the diff has a little stub male end that goes into the axle. Alright, so I'll drive this out of here. Alright, just like that. And there's the pin. the axle off and pull it out of the hub and there's one and then just repeat that for the other side so now that the axles are out next thing to do is disconnect the drive shaft to do that there's four uh, bolts here these are 12 millimeter um, really only have to turn the nut side. You don't have to worry about holding the, the back side of the bolt. The way the drive shaft design that'll hold that in place by itself. You do have to keep the drive shaft from turning. Usually I'll just wedge a screwdriver or power in there. times and repeat that process get all those out all right once all the drive shaft bolts are out just pry on the drive shaft get that loosened up all right and now move on to the rest of the bolts here gun to take these out. If you don't have an impact you can use a larger ratchet or breaker bar. Um, these 17 mil bolts can tend to be rather tight. Okay, with those nuts off of there, now I'll take these four bolts off around here. Those are 14 millimeter. Probably gonna need a ratchet or a wrench to get in into here between the fuel tank. Bolts on this side can be kind of difficult to get to. Uh, the gas tank right here. Trying to get a wrench on there is tricky without it slipping because you got the lip here of this um, mounting bracket that the 
diff sits in. I have uh, one of these offset ratchets here. Uh, something like this really comes in handy for doing this sort of work. Um, definitely recommend getting some kind of tool like this. If you don't have one, you can probably work out a way to get in here with a wrench and at least break them loose initially. This one isn't as bad. It's mostly this one here that's hard to fit a normal ratchet in there. Um, but yeah, just know these ones are going to be a little more difficult. Before I completely remove these bolts, uh, once this plate's out, the uh, front end of the diff is going to just want to start to hang and it's going to make place it in a bind and make it more difficult to remove the two mounting bolts here at the back. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple of these nuts back on here just to sort of hold things in place. Um, just leave them on. And then once we uh, take the mounting bolts out here in the back, we'll remove these and lower the whole diff out of here. So on the back of the diff here, it looks like there's four possible bolts to take out. The ones you want to remove are going to be these two uh, outer ones here and here. And this piece, um, this will all lower out of the rear cross member. Um, if you try to take these ones out, it'll just make your life more difficult. Um, because you can't really slide the diff forward because these bolts here don't just come out. Um, they are essentially studs that are attached to a plate up here. Um, and it's hard to lower the diff down enough to slide it out, so it's best to just take these two bolts out and drop the whole thing down evenly. Okay, so once those are bolts have been uh, loosened up, I usually push them about most of the way out. Um, you don't want to push them back all the way out immediately, or this back of the back of the diff could start to fall on you. Um, have everything just about ready to drop the diff. Um, it's all loose and nearly ready to come out. Um, you can either get a jack and set it underneath this thing, uh, you know, take the weight off of it, remove the last bolts and lower it down, or get underneath it and just kind of hold it. Um, they are a little heavier than they look, but not that bad. Got this is one of the other things that can happen as you're trying to lower it is these two studs right here can get caught on the uh, the cross member right here and here. Sometimes you got to get a pry bar in there, pry that out a little bit. All right, so I missed uh, recording lowering it out the rest of the way, but anyways, once I got in there with the pry bar. Right on the cross member a little bit, dropped right out. Uh, so yeah, this is the diff out of the car. Um, that's about all it takes to remove one of these.